John Bentavoya? Uh, he was the J in V&J Auto Service, my dad's mechanic shop when, well, until my brother Joseph was born and dad tried and failed to make him the J. Thank you much for coming. Luigi, my dad's old army buddy. You came 3,000 miles. Thank you so much. Thank you all for coming. It's a nice turnout. Dad would be well shocked. <laughs> I tore up three speeches about dad because, well, it started sounding like he was father of the year. And we all know that Vince DeMonte was a son of a bitch. <laughs> He'd either be uh, fixing your car, rescuing you, or ripping you off. <laughs> but he taught me a lot. A work ethic. If you wanted five bucks for the movies, well, then you had to weed the yard. And that was a bummer, because one high school summer, I got the worst case of poison oak. And then the next night, I had to be track and field queen and bestow medals and kisses on all of the winners. Who knows who got infected after that? <laughs> Driving. Dad was a terrible driver, being a mechanic. He would go over the bumps in the road. But he taught me how to drive a stick shift, how to double clutch a Model A Ford, how to take a dune buggy up Competition Hill in the dunes of Pismo Beach. If he wanted me to drive a Mack truck, I could have done that. But what he really taught me, what he gave to me, was the balls to stand up like a man. Daddy wanted another son told this girl to rely on no one taught me early that nothing comes for free he said in life there's no time for crying live it up or get busy dying every word that he said has stuck with me he said you gotta stand up like a man you gotta show the world you can keep your Chin up, shut up and suck it up. You gotta stand up, stand up. If things are messed up, never fret. Don't ever let them see you sweat. Be like a grown up. Shut up and suck it up. You gotta stand up, stand up. I can hear when my car needs to be serviced. Give me your DVD. I can program it in three seconds flat. Give me a soldering iron, I can solder your electrical wires back as good as new. And the reason I know this is because I sat at my dad's workbench watching him build a stereo system from scratch. He took the wires all the way from the den into the living room, turned on the Boston Pops Orchestra, and just stood there watching my face. Stand up like a man. You gotta show the world you can. Keep your chin up. Shut up and suck it up. You gotta stand up. Stand up. If things are messed up, never fret. Don't ever let them see you sweat. Be like a grown up. Shut up and suck it up. You gotta stand up. Stand up. Oh, come on. Stand up. Stand up now. Don't roll on the grass in your Sunday clothes. Bad, bad, bad. Joey, Susie, why, why can't you listen to me, huh? You never listen to me. Do you want a spanking? Huh? Do you want the wooden spoon? I told you once, I told you twice, I told you three times. Hello? Oh, hi, Mom. Fine, fine. Well, I'm 
writing a show. Yes, it's very exciting. <laughs> no, Mom, I'm not going to write about the time that you put me in the clothes dryer and turned it on. <laughs> But I, I do, I do want to write about the wooden spoon. But, but mom, but mom, you, you really did beat our bare butts with that wooden spoon. Well, I had to. You kids never listened to me. Your father and I got married after only knowing each other for three months, and then your brother came along because, well, you know, Vince never wore a rubber. He came out, he was crying, he never ate, he never slept. I had to get that phenobarbital to give it to him to calm him down from the doctor. And uh, those little orange wheezing pills for his asthma. God, you kids never listened to me. But it wasn't always that bad. I dreamed of a pink baby daughter. And you came out, Suze. You slept through the night. You ate everything on your high chair. You were a good girl, Suze. And I made you a pink bonnet, a pink frilly dress, and pink booties. Ah! I just love dolling you guys up. And those birthday parties we used to have, all the Swedish, Irish, and Italians came, except for my father. Because he dropped dead on the street of a heart attack, he would have come. And I made my famous potato salad. And Granny DeMonte would say, Molto bella, Maggi, molto bella. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear Susie, happy birthday to. What'd you say, Vince? I am not a wino. Mom? Um. Can I write about the wooden spoon? Do you ever feel dissatisfied or want to cry while wondering what to say? Can it be that I'm the only one who's lonely in this crazy game we play. You know what's rich? Then admit you're ever wrong. You'd sooner dig a ditch. <sighs> but I guess I love you. Yes, I love you. You bitch. Oh, come on. Beat your bare butts with that wooden spoon. I just rattled the drawer and you guys went running. <laughs> oh, go ahead, write about it. I have the original, Suze. Would you like me to frame it and send it to you? <laughs> there are times I think of others without mothers, and I want to say, take mine. Any moment you're a demon or an angel, highly toxic or benign. Sometimes I'd switch you for someone else's mother. Hell, I don't care which. But I guess I love you. Yes, I love you, you bitch. You recall my life with glee and tell me our family history was swell. Your selective memory serves you well, my dear. Remember those birthday cakes that I used to make from scratch with the Madame Alexander dolls coming out the center? No other little girl got a birthday cake on the block like that. 
<sighs> Can we finally lift the curtain on the hurtin' and react with no surprise? Let us set aside our feelings with some healing and a dose of compromise. Let's fix the glitch and avoid the confrontations at a fevered pitch. Cause you see, I love you. Yes, I love you, you bitch.